Hello, and welcome back to Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, where today we are going to be doing some more high rank village. So let's go ahead and have a little meal here, because I don't know about you, but I think it's better to have more stats. Even if we can't get the stats we want most. So let's just go for some... Really? We can't even get defense hot large? This game is trying to do things to me. But actually, let's just eat for gatherer. Because I think we'll have the actual gathering quest unlocked by now. And we'll just do that real quick. So, let's see here. Looks like we actually don't get that quest yet. Okay. Well, then I got Gatherer for nothing, but that's fine. We can still do a thing. What thing do we want to do? Um, now there's still another set for us to unlock. All right, so let's do Gypsaros. That right there. It's been a long time since I fought a Gypsy Ross. Also, as you can maybe tell by my weapon, I did some G rank gathering off camera. So, yeah, I've got this thing now. It's nice. Has 60 more raw than anything I had been using. And that's a pretty good amount of more raw to have. Wait. How? Was the primal forest not in Jen? Why am I getting a primal forest cutscene? <laughs> oh, also, I've been uh, trying out Valor style. And I'm actually kind of liking it. Like, it definitely takes some getting used to, but... I'm at the point now where I can make it work sometimes. Looks like the Slag Toth are a little antsy, which means the Gypsaros ain't far. He's probably just up there. No? Gypsaros? Um, in here? No? What were the Slagtoth worried about then? Was he up at the, the nest? I wish I had Psycho Serum. Because with no Dragon Seer out there, I'm basically relying on stumbling across the bird at some point. And Gypsaros isn't exactly known for holding still for long periods of time. So hopefully he'll just be in here hanging out. Nope. Okay. Um... Time for a judgment call. Let's go this way. And with luck... Okay, no bird, but the slag toff don't care about anything. So he's at least not in an adjacent area. So let's actually go through here. Maybe this will take me towards the bird.
Bird? Bird? Maybe he's through there. Whoa, those are some giant eyes. I wonder what they belong to. Bird? No bird. Um, maybe he'll have gone up here? Bird! But Bird is leaving. But Bird has a shadow. A very big shadow. Okay. That way, I believe, puts us over here. Bird! So, Valor style, we go into our sheathing stance and we hit buttons to raise a meter. And then once that meter is raised, we get to actually have some fun. That's right, I can dodge light. So yeah, the blue meter is the one we're trying to raise, and it raises every time we hit the monster, and it raises even more if we hit the monster with an attack from that sheathing stance. Also, if we take a hit from the front while we're in the sheathing stance, we'll dodge it and just take a small amount of damage. Alright, so now we get to have some fun. Because you'll note there's a little, like, white flash in front of me when I hit the button for this attack. If I take a hit from the front while there's that little flash, I will take zero damage and actually counter the hit. Which, I mean, that's pretty nice. Though it is a really tight window, and when Gypsaros is doing his spit is not really the best time to try it. Okay, let's see if we can parry the light. And now he can't do light. And now we get unhinged spirit, so we can just do spirit combos whenever we want. So, hooray, we just basically spam spirit attacks as best we can. Dang it, press the button a moment too late. That is one thing that Valor Style has me doing that isn't the greatest for me, is I tend to try to parry things, some of which I would be much better off if I just tried dodging, because I'm not a perfect parrying guy. I don't believe it to actually be dead here. Just for some reason. Maybe it's that the quest hasn't ended yet, but I'm pretty sure this bird is still alive. That's right, I parried it. And then killed it. Alright. So we are doing another quest this episode. That much is for certain. Especially because of how little time we spent actually fighting this bird. I think we might do another, like, three, ep or three quest episode. Even though the next one would technically put us over that ten minutes. I just... I want to get done with this tier of village. So another thing about Valor Style is instead of needing to baby my uh, sword gauge, basically once I'm in Valor mode, I always have blue gauge, which sits between yellow and red in terms of damage output. So sure, at most it's not quite as damaging as having red gauge is, but when I've got my uh, Unleash Spirit or whatever it is, going and can just spam spirit attacks 
it's still pretty high damage, and being able to parry attacks is also pretty dang nice. Give me attack up. At least I can get defense up this time. Not that I super need it for high rank, but I mean, it's something. Alright, let's see here. We need to do spit it out. So let's do spit it out. Set. We gotta get a Tetsukabwa in the Jurassic Frontier. Alright. So, it's actually not a terrible idea to use small monsters to level up your Valor Gauge. Because they don't really fight back. That one died in one hit. Of course, it was a stronger hit than I used on the smaller one, but still, you don't expect the big ones to go down that much faster. And I'll leave these Kelbys be because they are small targets and sometimes they move around. Plus, we've already got a little bit of buildup that we can use on the frog. Dodge the roar. And there we go. We are in Valor mode. So we are able to do the damage and the parrying. I just need to actually A, watch for the attacks and B, not get hit by them. Also, I need to really get the timing down. There are some attacks where I press the button way too early. I'm still used to adept dodge timing, so needing to swap to the actual parry timing is definitely something I need to get used to. Unhinged spirit. So now we can just spam spirit slashes all day long. I really should use fate slashes between my spirit slashes. That's the smarter thing. I'm new to Valor Longsword. Just bear with me. That's right, I parried a rock. And that too. And there goes that tusk. And then there are some times where I would have parried a thing if only I was actually in its way. Do you have to be facing a thing to parry it? Yep. Parrying through projectiles, and liquids, and whatnot is always silly. But uh, parrying light and sound. Those are especially fun. Because, like, physics. Physics. 
no roar for you. Though I'm sad because my Valor mode just wore off. Oh, that's a limpy frog. Let me just grab these sparklies. Well, those weren't really that worth grabbing. But hey, I've got them now. Now let's just go ahead and capture this frog, because why the hell not? Makes things go slightly faster. So yeah, that's going to unlock some more quests for us, I'm pretty sure. After all... That was the only other key quest that I noticed while paging through things. So yeah, I had better unlock more key quests. Either that or I better have missed one because I was just looking through kind of quickly. But we'll find out in just a moment, I suppose. All right. Looks like we do indeed get new keys. Oh, good. Uh-huh. Do you want me to go get some comet, comet rock things? Uh-huh. Did you? Oh, okay. That's not the quest I was expecting. But I suppose I can play with a royal looty. And let's... Right, we sort, because that helps us find things better. Uh, let's do hot Malfest beef. And weakener is fine. Yep, that's it. Mm. Don't know that she's young, though. She's Wyvarian. Wyvarians have very long lives, don't they? I know, right? Misty Peaks is gorgeous. Are gorgeous. The map is gorgeous. The peaks are gorgeous. Yeah. All right, so that one right there. And then we'll just grab that item set. And off we go to play with Ludi. Hi, birds. So, Ludi will be right through here. And what do you know, there's a Ludi. But also, there's some of these. I'm going to grab them. Though I'm already up to like 40 from the gathering I did in G-Rank. Alright. 
So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna use these two little looties. So now there's just one. All right. Because being able to hit multiple monsters at once lets me build up my Valor Gauge way faster. Almost like I'm building it up two or more times faster because there are two or more monsters. The sound that they have for the parry is also just makes it that much more satisfying. And I know it's the same sound they do for, like, all of the spirit combo finishers, but it's a really satisfying sound when it comes with an attack that either blocks something or is at the end of a combo. I also really like that it seems to have higher stagger potential than most attacks when I counter things. So that might just be... Uh, confirmation bias. Like me taking note only of the times when it does flinch. Or rather only taking note of how many flinches I get with it relative to getting with any other attack. But come on. You can't tell me that doesn't feel good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's got higher flinch ability, the fact that I just got two flinches in a row with it. Sure, they were on different body parts, but it feels like it flinches things better. come this way. Okay, I guess I couldn't counter it because I wasn't actually hit by a hitbox. Alright, that is a limpy lizard. So, let's grab this sparkly. And we'll also carve this tail. And we just lost valor mode. So I'm going to go ahead and cap the lizard. Capturing it is certainly less reliant on whether or not I'm in valor mode. So I'm just going to put this right around here. Because that way if the lizard ends up limping to where it goes to sleep, maybe it'll go over the trap. With the placement being where it is, I don't imagine it actually would, but we can dream. Come here, lizard. That's not coming here. That's spitting at me. Cats, get over here. Okay, limping over the trap. Good. Sleepy lizard. It is weird having the water just be a solid texture that's completely opaque and moving like this. Because, like, when I'm moving with it, oh, this just looks so weird. And then when I go the other way, it's turbo. It's like a conveyor belt of water. Which I guess is... Basically what rivers are. But still, water isn't supposed to be opaque. All right, how'd we do? 
Oh, am I? All right. So that is not everything. What's going on here? It doesn't? So what do we have? We've got more harvest tours. And we've got that. Okay, so... Yeah, we've got the two, three, no, two. We've got the two key quests that we didn't have yet. But we're not going to do them just yet. We're going to talk to all the people with text bubbles because I, I did do a bunch of G-rank quests, like all of the non-keys that I could do. So a lot of this is related to that. But still, we're going to talk to everyone, and then that's how we're going to close out this episode. So... Yeah, if you want to see more hunts, then go watch the next episode if it's out, or wait for it, or something. I don't know, I've got other Monster Hunter videos you can watch. But this one is text bubbles for the rest of the episode. Okay, Palico Tina. Anyone? Okay, you've got something too. That's that for here. But we've still got the rest of Baron to look at. And I've got hiccups, apparently. Do we have? Yeah, there's more in Baron. Oh, you. I probably got some gold crown or something. Bizarro monsters? Okay. And that's one of my buddies. Uh, no one in here even had anything to say. So I did this guy's quest. It was just a cut coup in the Verdant Hills. Oh. Why, thank you. Because I like Yukimo. It's my favorite village. Uh, edibility, flavor. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah, sure. What are you doing outside my house? She's supposed to be on housekeeping duty. Did this guy's quest as well.
Okay. And apparently we've got more to see here in Poke. I bet it's the flight attendant, though. Yep. There we go. So let's go to the hunter's pub. Because the mustress has some talking to do at us. There's my buddy again. Sure. Okay. Is it called Sorry Worry? Okay. Alright, so to the Soratorium we go. Or the Sorry Worry, I guess. Oh. Would you look at that? It's these guys. The Red Spear Hunter and the Black Spear Hunter from Moga Village. Okay. All right. I hope your breathing didn't cease. Hmm. What an interesting shanty. They got a globe and more map. Yes. Yeah, I've been there. All right. Well, that's nice. So yeah, now we can uh, fuse headgear, which is the only gear that we can fuse until beating G-Rank. But hey, it's a thing. So, we got any expansions to do? No, we, er, yes. Head armor fusion. We still had to research it. But yeah, until we beat the G rank stuff and unlock our HR, we can't fuse any different armor pieces, just head. Except I already did. Did you just add more? No, I had already expanded the stuff. You're late, cat. Uh, back to the pub, I guess, where I'm sure the mustress is going to tell us that she can get us fusion materials.
Yep, that's exactly the thing. Yes, armor splishing. No, I think armor smushing sounds fine. And what now? Ooh, that is awesome. So what are you trading? Okay, fusion materials. I, sh I saw that coming. I should have seen that more coming. Whatever. And wow, this oratorium's got another text bubble for us. So I guess we're going right back there. Okay, who is it? Uh, it's the laboratory? Yep. Hello. All right, so you just wanted to introduce yourself? Got it. And you're going to talk to us about our new ingredients? All right, so sort them by usable. And looks like that's it. Three new meals. And with that, we... Yes, we will end this episode. And join us next time when I think we're going to do some G-Rank questing. I want to actually unlock G2 so that I can do more with my friends. So yeah, join us next time for a little bit of G-Rank. See you then, friends. <laughs>